During cross-examination this morning, defense attorney for Brian Lloyd McFarlane asked the witness why he was confident to give a statement on the members of the gang in 2018, seeing that he was also a member of the gang. He says he wanted to put a stop to the gang and its crimes. The witness says he was also confident Brian, when arrested that year, would not reveal the names of his cronies. But the witness says even if he, the witness, was going to be arrested by the police, he was still willing to give evidence to put an end to the crimes. According to the witness, he was never a crime producer. That was not in his nature. But attorney McFarlane shot back, asking the witness, quote, When you were running a program on Dooley, you were not a crime producer? During cross-examination this morning, defense attorney for Brian Lloyd McFarlane asked the witness why he was confident to give a statement on the members of the gang in 2018, seeing that he was also a member of the gang. He says he wanted to put a stop to the gang and its crimes. The witness says he was also confident Brian, when arrested that year, would not reveal the names of his cronies. But the witness says even if he, the witness, was going to be arrested by the police, he was still willing to give evidence to put an end to the crimes. According to the witness, he was never a crime producer. That was not in his nature. But attorney McFarlane shot back, asking the witness, quote, When you were running a program on Dooley, you were not a crime producer? In response, the witness said, Is that I do it, I did, sir. The prosecution also tried this morning to have the court listen to and read transcripts of audio recordings the witness says he did of conversations with the gangsters. But the defense attorneys objected after they said the documents do not bear neither the witness's signature nor those of the police officers he said had signed them. The prosecution asked presiding judge Justice Brian Spike permission to recall the witness subsequently when that issue was resolved. On day 22, the prosecution's second witness faced off with a defense attorney for Brian, Lloyd McFarlane, over inconsistencies between the statement he gave the police and what he's told the court. The witness, who says he was a top-tier member of the gang and done for Lauriston at the time, says he conjured up the courage to go to the police in 2018, aiming to put an end to the gang. He says he'd gone at least one time before and turned back, fearing for his life. But attorney McFarlane questioned the witness's credibility, asking why he was confident he, being a member of the gang himself, wouldn't also be arrested by the police. The witness says he was confident Brian, who was detained at the time, would not have revealed details about his cronies to the police. The witness also said he'd made up his mind that even if the police were going to arrest him, he had to put an end to the gang and their crimes. The attorney also questioned the details the witness gave the police in a statement about the murder of a man called Dooley and another man called Outlaw. The witness told the court last week that Dooley was a friend of his and a gangster loyal to former gang leader Tesha Miller. According to McFarlane, there are differences in some of the details in the police statement compared to what the witness has been outlining before the courts. The witness admitted he's made some mistakes in his statement to the police, but he insists he's being honest in presenting evidence to the court. According to the witness, he's been through a lot over the years, trying to keep himself safe, and he's traumatized. According to the witness, quote, When I was giving a statement different from no, I was under a lot of stress, but I'm not telling any lie on anyone. You can't ask the defendant behind you. He says he's only told one lie, but the defense attorney refused to allow the witness to explain what that was. The defense attorney asked the witness why he was near the crime scene where Outlaw was killed if he never wanted the man dead in the first place. The witness explained that under Brian's system, the gangsters were sometimes required to go to the crime scenes of their targets and even take photos of the murdered person to confirm to the gang leader that the target was dead. He says he was just following instructions. The witness says if he didn't go ahead with Brian's orders, he would be the one murdered. In the meantime, attorney for Kevon Green, Shannon Clark, requested additional time to prepare for cross-examining the witness. Presiding Judge Justice Brian Sykes ruled that the prosecution's first witness would tomorrow be cross-examined by attorney Dennis Hinson, who represents the accused Brian Morris. Justice Sykes says after that, the trial will be adjourned until Thursday to give the other attorneys time to prepare to cross-examine the second witness. The first witness was recalled because Ms. Hinson was assigned late to represent Brian Morris and had requested additional time to prepare questions for cross-examination. The witness is giving evidence from an undisclosed location via video link. He explained that while he was a gangster, no one from his community in St. Catherine knew about his dealings in crime. He says his neighbors know him as a businessman. The witness recalled in 2019, the police knocking down his grill, telling him they had a warrant to search his home in relation to gang involvement. He says several of the gangsters were detained by the police that year. 
According to the witness, the manner in which the police arrested the gangsters, he surmised they were being assisted by someone in their ranks. He was, however, adamant that he was not in contact with other witnesses nor knew the content of statements they've given to the police. Defense attorney Hinson also dismissed the witness's claims that her client would guard his house whenever Brian visited. She insisted that the witness's only interaction with her client was when they were arrested together in 2019. In the meantime, the first witness, like the second, told the court today that he was forced to join the gang by Brian. According to the witness, quote, Once you deal with them gangsters, yeah, you know you can't refuse. Once you refuse, you know you go dead. He says he came to that understanding after having conversations with a friend who introduced him to Brian, a man he calls Frazzle, now deceased. The witness said, quote, Sir, once you're not with them, you're gonna be murdered. That's how Jamaica run. He made the disclosure while answering additional questions from the prosecution, but he then complained about feeling unwell, which led to an early adjournment to the day's proceedings. The second witness says when he decided to put an end to the gang, he approached a policeman he usually sees patrolling his community. He says that policeman was causing trouble for the gang, and they were planning to have him murdered. The witness says he knew he could trust that policeman, but he says the policeman told him he had to take his evidence to what he calls bigger heads in the force. The witness says when he went to Talk, they told him they already knew the information he's presented to them. But he says senior officers were adamant he, the witness, could not have been in interaction with Brian as the accused gang leader was detained at the time. However, he says he provided several statements to the officers. The witness says while Brian's brother Kevin Green was also a top-tier member of the gang, the gang leader never wanted his brother in too deep. He says Brian would keep Green away from a lot of things, but he says Green would be involved in gun buying and testing. The witness admitted he did not know very well one of the alleged gangsters he'd pointed out in the court recently. He made that admission about the accused Damien Elliston after a cross-examination by defense attorneys and questions posed by presiding judge Chief Justice Brian Sykes. In the meantime, attorney representing Khalifa Williams, Abina Morris, declared the witness was a liar, noting he's made several statements during his testimony about several women he's been involved with. But the witness says his wife knew that was his thing and that he gave trouble. The witness says, quote, I even tell her about an outside child I had, ma'am. The courtroom erupted in laughter when the witness asked if the line of questioning was relevant to the case. The witness then insisted he's been honest in presenting evidence to the court.